Indo-Iranian peoples, also known as Indo-Iranic peoples by scholars, and sometimes as Arya or Aryans from their self-designation, were an ethno-linguistic group who brought the Indo-Iranian languages, a major branch of the Indo-European language family, to major parts of Eurasia. Nomenclature the term Aryan has been used historically to denote the Indo-Iranians, because Arya is the self-designation of the ancient speakers of the Indo-Iranian languages, specifically the Iranian and the Indo-Aryan peoples, collectively known as the Indo-Iranians. Some scholars now use the term Indo-Iranian to refer to this group, while the term Aryan is used to mean Indo-Iranian by other scholars such as Joseph Wieshofer, Will Durant, and Yako Hakkinen. Population geneticist Luigi Luca Cavalli Sforza, in his 1994 book The History and Geography of Human Genes, also uses the term Aryan to describe the Indo Iranians. Origin The early Indo Iranians are commonly identified with the descendants of the Proto Indo Europeans known as the Sintashta culture and the subsequent Andronovo culture within the broader Andronovo horizon, and their homeland with an area of the Eurasian steppe that borders the Ural River on the west, the Tian Shan on the east, where the Indo Iranians took over the area occupied by the earlier Afanasevo culture, and Transoxiana and the Hindu Kush on the south. Historical linguists broadly estimate that a continuum of Indo-Iranian languages probably began to diverge by 2000 BC, if not earlier, preceding both the Vedic and Iranian cultures. The earliest recorded forms of these languages, Vedic Sanskrit and Gathic Avestan, are remarkably similar, descended from the common Proto-Indo-Iranian language. The origin and earliest relationship between the Nuristani languages and that of the Iranian and Indo-Aryan groups is not completely clear. Expansion Two wave models of Indo-Iranian expansion have been proposed by Burrow 1973 and Parpola 1999. The Indo-Iranians and their expansion are strongly associated with the Proto-Indo-European invention of the chariot. It is assumed that this expansion spread from the Proto-Indo-European homeland north of the Caspian Sea south to the Caucasus, Central Asia, the Iranian Plateau, and northern India. They also expanded into Mesopotamia and Syria and introduced the horse and chariot culture to this part of the world. Sumerian texts from Edib Gursu BC already mention the chariot. Giger and Ur three texts 2000 BC mention the horse Topic: First wave Indo-Aryans. Topic: Topic: The Mitanni of Anatolia. Topic. The Mitanni, a people known in eastern Anatolia from about 1500 BC, were of mixed origins. A Hurrian speaking majority was dominated by a non Anatolian, Indo Aryan elite. There is linguistic evidence for such a superstrate, in the form of a horse training manual written by a Mitanni man named Kikuli, which was used by the Hittites, an Indo European Anatolian people, the names of Mitanni rulers and the names of gods invoked by these rulers in treaties, in particular, Kikili's text includes words such as Ika, one, i.e. a cognate of the Indo-Aryan Aika, Tara, three, Tri, Panza, five, Pancha, Sada, seven, Sapta, Na, nine, Nava, and Vartana, turn around, in the context of a horse race Indo-Aryan Vartana. In a treaty between the Hittites and the Mitanni, the Ashvan deities Mitra, Varuna, Indra, and Nasatya are invoked. These loanwords tend to connect the Mitanni superstrate to Indo-Aryan rather than Iranian languages, i.e. the early Iranian word for one was Aiva. <laughs> Indian subcontinent, Vedic culture the standard model for the entry of the Indo-European languages into the Indian subcontinent is that this first wave went over the Hindu Kush, either into the headwaters of the Indus and later the Ganges. The earliest stratum of Vedic Sanskrit, preserved only in the Rigveda, is assigned to roughly 1500 BC. From the Indus, the Indo-Aryan languages spread from c. 
1500 BC to c. 500 BC, over the northern and central parts of the subcontinent, sparing the extreme south. The Indo-Aryans in these areas established several powerful kingdoms and principalities in the region, from southeastern Afghanistan to the doorstep of Bengal. The most powerful of these kingdoms were the post-Rigvedic Kuru in Kurukshetra and the Delhi area and their allies the Pankalas further east, as well as Gandhara and later on, about the time of the Buddha, the kingdom of Kosala and the quickly expanding realm of Magadha. The latter lasted until the 4th century BC, when it was conquered by Chandragupta Maurya and formed the center of the Mauryan Empire. In eastern Afghanistan and southwestern Pakistan, whatever Indo-Aryan languages were spoken there were eventually pushed out by the Iranian languages. Most Indo-Aryan languages, however, were and still are prominent in the rest of the Indian subcontinent. Today, Indo-Aryan languages are spoken in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Fiji and the Maldives. Topic. Second wave, Iranians. The second wave is interpreted as the Iranian wave. The first Iranians to reach the Black Sea may have been the Cimmerians in the 8th century BC, although their linguistic affiliation is uncertain. They were followed by the Scythians, who are considered a western branch of the Central Asian Sakas. Sarmatian tribes, of whom the best known are the Roxolani, Roxolani Iazigas, Jazigas, and the Alani, Alans, followed the Scythians westwards into Europe in the late centuries BC and the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, the Age of Migrations. The populous Sarmatian tribe of the Masajti, dwelling near the Caspian Sea, were known to the early rulers of Persia in the Achaemenid period. At their greatest reported extent, around 1st century AD, the Sarmatian tribes ranged from the Vistula River to the mouth of the Danube and eastward to the Volga, bordering the shores of the Black and Caspian Seas as well as the Caucasus to the south. In the east, the Saka occupied several areas in Xinjiang, from Khotan to Tumshuk. The Medians, Persians and Parthians begin to appear on the Iranian plateau from c. 800 BC, and the Achaemenids replaced Elamite rule from 559 BC. Around the first millennium AD, Iranian groups began to settle on the eastern edge of the Iranian plateau, on the mountainous frontier of northwestern and western Pakistan, displacing the earlier Indo-Aryans from the area. In Eastern Europe, the Iranians were eventually decisively assimilated e slavicization, and absorbed by the proto-Slavic population of the region, while in Central Asia, the Turkic languages marginalized the Iranian languages as a result of the Turkic expansion of the early centuries AD. Extant major Iranian languages are Persian, Pashto, Kurdish, and Balochi besides numerous smaller ones. Ossetian, primarily spoken in North Ossetia and South Ossetia, is a direct descendant of Alanic, and by that the only surviving Sarmatian language of the once wide-ranging East Iranian dialect continuum that stretched from Eastern Europe to the eastern parts of Central Asia. Archaeology Topic. Archaeological cultures associated with Indo-Iranian expansion include Europe Poltavka culture BC Central Asia Andronovo Horizon 1000 BC Sintashta Petrovka Arkhame 1600 BC Alakul 1400 BC Fedorovo 1400 to 1200 BC Alekivka 1200 to 1000 BC Bactria Margiana archaeological complex 1700 BC Srubna culture 2000 to 1100 BC Abashevo culture 1700 to 1500 BC Yaz culture 1500 to 1100 BC India Middle Ganges plains Painted Grey Ware Culture 1100 to 350 BC. Iran. Early West Iranian Grey Ware 1500 to 1000 BC. Late West Iranian Buff Ware 900 to 700 BC. Indian Subcontinent. Swat Culture 1600 to 500 BC. Cemetery H culture 1900 to 1300 BC. Parpola 1999 suggests the following identifications. Topic. Language 
Topic. The Indo-European language spoken by the Indo-Iranians in the late 3rd millennium BC was a Satim language still not removed very far from the Proto-Indo-European language, and in turn only removed by a few centuries from Vedic Sanskrit of the Rigveda. The main phonological change separating Proto-Indo-Iranian from Proto-Indo-European is the collapse of the oblouting vowels asterisk e, asterisk o, asterisk a into a single vowel, Proto-Indo-Iranian asterisk a but see Brugman. S. Law. Grassman. S. Law and Bartolome. S. Law were also complete in Proto Indo Iranian, as well as the loss of the labiovelars to K, and the Eastern Indo European shift from palatized K to C, as in Proto Indo European Kum2 greater than Indo Iran. Asterisk Kata greater than Sanskrit Seda, Old Iran, Seda. 100. Among the sound changes from Proto-Indo-Iranian to Indo-Aryan is the loss of the voiced sibilant asterisk Z, among those to Iranian is the de-aspiration of the pi-voiced aspirates. Religion Despite the introduction of later Hindu and Zoroastrian scriptures, Indo-Iranians shared a common inheritance of concepts including the universal force asterisk hurta Sanskrit RTA, Avestan Asha, the sacred plant and drink asterisk Sama Sanskrit Soma, Avestan Hayoma and gods of social order such as asterisk Mitra Sanskrit Mitra, Avestan and Old Persian Mithra, Mi, Ra and asterisk B Aga Sanskrit Baga, Avestan and Old Persian Baga. Proto-Indo-Iranian religion is an archaic offshoot of Indo-European religion. From the various and dispersed Indo-Iranian cultures, a set of common ideas may be reconstructed from which a common, unattested Proto-Indo-Iranian source may be deduced. <laughs> <laughs> development Topic. Beliefs developed in different ways as cultures separated and evolved. For example, the cosmo-mythology of the peoples that remained on the Central Asian steppes and the Iranian plateau is to a great degree unlike that of the Indians, focused more on groups of deities asterisk deva and, asterisk asura and less on the divinities individually. Indians were less conservative than Iranians in their treatment of their divinities, so that some deities were conflated with others or, conversely, aspects of a single divinity developed into divinities in their own right. By the time of Zoroaster, Iranian culture had also been subject to the upheavals of the Iranian Heroic Age late Iranian Bronze Age, 1800-800 BCE, an influence that the Indians were not subject to. Sometimes certain myths developed in altogether different ways. The Rig Vedic Sarasvati is linguistically and functionally cognate with Avestan asterisk Haraksvaiti Arduui Sura Anahita. In the Rig Veda 6, 61, 5-7 she battles a serpent called Vritra, who has hoarded all of the earth's water. In contrast, in early portions of the Avesta, Iranian asterisk Haravati is the world river that flows down from the mythical central Mount Hara. But asterisk Haravati does no battle. She is blocked by an obstacle Avestan for obstacle, Ver, Ra, placed there by Angra Mainu. Topic. Cognate terms. Topic. The following is a list of cognate terms that may be gleaned from comparative linguistic analysis of the Rigveda and Avesta. Both collections are from the period after the proposed date of separation ca. 2nd millennium BCE of the Proto-Indo-Iranians into their respective Indic and Iranian branches. Topic. Genetics Topic. R1A1A -A RM17 or RM198 is the subclade most commonly associated with Indo-European speakers. Most discussions purportedly of R1A origins are actually about the origins of the dominant R1A1A -A RM17 or RM198 subclade. Data so far collected indicates that there are two widely separated areas of high frequency, one in the Indian subcontinent, around North India, and the other in Eastern Europe, around Poland and Ukraine. The historical and prehistoric possible reasons for this are the subject of ongoing discussion and attention amongst population geneticists and genetic genealogists, and are considered to be of potential interest to linguists and archaeologists also. 
Out of ten human male remains assigned to the Andronovo horizon from the Krasnoyarsk region, nine possessed the R1A Y chromosome haplogroup and one CM130 haplogroup XC3. mtDNA haplogroups of nine individuals assigned to the same Andronovo horizon and region were as follows, U4 two individuals, U2E, U5A1, Z, T1, T4, H, and K2B. 90% of the Bronze Age period mtDNA haplogroups were of West Eurasian origin and the study determined that at least 60% of the individuals overall out of the 26 Bronze and Iron Age human remains samples of the study that could be tested had light hair and blue or green eyes. A 2004 study also established that during the Bronze Age Iron Age period, the majority of the population of Kazakhstan, part of the Andronovo culture during Bronze Age, was of West Eurasian origin with mtDNA haplogroups groups such as U, H, HV, T, I and W, and that prior to the 13th–7th century BC, all Kazakh samples belonged to European lineages. See also Proto-Indo-Iranian language Satimization Proto-Indo-Iranian religion Aryana Aryavarta Topic. References Topic. Topic. Bibliography Topic. Topic. External links Topic. The Origin of the Pre-Imperial Iranian People by Oric Basarov 2001. The Origin of the Indo-Iranians Elena E. Kuzamina. Edited by J.P. Mallory 2007.